I love Cindy Kim bitch because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> not, I was like, I had to like, do Too funny, mama. What's with the grip? What's up? We're back. Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We haven't seen each other in a long time. So, yeah. We don't know what roles we play. Feels like every show you've done. <laughs> Real fun. Um, Welcome to Two Funny Mamas, everybody. I'm Sherry Shepard. And I'm Kim Whitley. Okay. And welcome to the show. It's been a minute. Welcome listeners. Welcome viewers. Uh, we are both, uh, we're not at home. Let's just say that. Um, where are you in so, an African hut and like, uh, where are you at? I could be in an African hut because I don't really, I'm trying to understand where I am. I'm so jet lagged. Wait. I just landed. You were in Ireland. I know you went to Ireland. Then on your Instagram, I found out you went to London. Then you were in Paris. Like you, are you like trying to leave the country? Soon, soon. I'm telling you, if Trump gets back in office, I was trying to find some property in other in uh, Paris, countries. Paris? In Paris? Oh, I'll take it. Oh, uh, au revoir, uh, bonjour. Joshua learned uh, you Spanish, gonna live? I mean, Spanish, Jesus. I don't know where I am. Are you um, gonna live in the Eiffel Tower Hills? <laughs> <laughs> that was good, that was funny. Leaning Tower of Pisa Estates. <laughs> I probably, I'll, I'll probably live uh, on the streets with the rest of the people that can't afford Paris. Uh, but they take care of their homeless. Their homeless situation is nothing like ours. We should be ashamed of ourselves. Nowhere really? did I see no homeless people in London, no homeless people like one and in Paris. And he was on a mattress on the street. So he was quite comfortable. Was he eating um, brie? Probably with some uh, gray poupon. Uh, oh so gosh, I never saw homelessness, uh, not even in Ireland. I didn't see homeless people. I did see people asking for money, but that was it. Not not like, I'm sorry, I'm jet lagged. Me Ugh. too. Um, really? You too? Because I got it's off a plane. That's rough. Thank you. It's, it's rough. They're traveling. How do you handle jet lag, Sherry Shepard? I do, sir. Oh, my God. This is the worst <laughs> podcast. I was going to say. But you know what? We do it for our fans. We're going to show up. We do show up, jet lagged and all. I, you have to tell us your story. It doesn't matter how I handle jet lag, because I just do. But you, uh, the one thing I know you have to be on the, no matter what time it is, once you get to the, your destination, get on their time zone. So if, yes. if, if, time, if, if normally your destination would be hours earlier, but it's late, you got to stay up. You got to get on that time zone. But how did you do, you did a game well, show. In yeah, Ireland. but that's what, so, you know, uh, we went to Ireland, but Caroline Ray, as soon as we got to Ireland, Caroline Ray was there and Caroline said, nope, nope, no sleeping, no sleeping. I know Joshua was yawning out. We were so tired, no sleeping. So we went downstairs to the lobby, we drank coffee. I gave Joshua coffee. We, she said, you got to stay up. You got to get on their time zone. You can go to bed tonight. So we went out, we stayed up, stayed up, stayed up, and then, so it, we adjusted, it was fantastic. There we are, uh, Caroline Ray, me and Hannah, that's in Ireland. Wait, who? Uh, we're in front of Hannah, 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 Hannah. 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 <laughs> my, my niece, Hannah, who is unbelievable, and me and Caroline, we went to a pub because we wanted to try the fish and chips and um, the ale. So that was us the in ale. Ireland. Oh, they got the, the beer. Yeah. Not oh the my train. God. The L. Oh, A-L-E. <laughs> I thought you were like the L train. The L, the beer. Okay. I didn't look, Kim. I ain't never been to Ireland. So don't act like I'm hood. Because I don't know what A-L-E. <laughs> but what you doing your neck like this? Uh, I'm just saying. Well, I mean, Kim, I'm curious. On the on the ale part, will you tell people like what makes it? You don't even really drink that much. What was What was the difference in the bar? 
Uh, it was it was different. The ale was strong, the beer, the fish and chips was delicious, but not as delicious as the fish and chips in London. Very uh, interesting, uh, the food. I'll tell you, the first time Joshua ate was probably in Paris once, and then when he got home last night. He didn't like the food in Ireland. He didn't like the food in Paris. Um, so he ate a lot of Skittles and bread. Okay, okay so gotcha. tell me what happened when you was in any of the pubs or restaurants and Joshua acted up in Ireland, Paris, and London. What they look at you like? Well, <laughs> fair question. <laughs> well, they didn't really, Chris. I'm just, I just, I love that uh, there's a million ways to go about this. And Sherry starts it off not only slandering you and your son, but also kind of me as the only Caucasian and probably all my relatives over there giving you side eyes. <laughs> you know what? Pardon me. Excuse me. Right, because their children maybe don't act like that. I don't know. But, um, and if my eyelash falls off at any time, let me know. Because I ran to, I haven't had eyelashes on a couple of days. I ran to the drugstore. I got some eyelashes and I got some raggedy eyelash glue. Um, so it's kind of bad. So that's a sidebar. And another sidebar is I have no idea of time or uh, days. Uh, Chris, please keep track of the time because I have to go out and buy some underwear. So um, that's another what? thing that we'll get. So the clothes I have on, I've had on for three days. Okay. So yeah, I threw away my underwear this morning. Yeah, that's TMI, but when you I- You don't have detergent. I always take detergent with me no, when I'm on the road. You take detergent with you? Yeah, I take liquid. I put it in, I ordered a bottle from Amazon and I oh, put that's it in my so cute. That would and be, I put yes. the liquid. And yeah, I wash oh my, my underwear. I know that'd be so great if I had my luggage. <laughs> oh, okay. They lost it. Your new suitcases. Oh, they they didn't lose them. I don't think. We'll see. They oh, said no. they bring them. They're gone. Um. Yeah. So, I need to run to the store. But Chris was like, "You have to do the podcast." I said, "Okay." And then I was like, "Just." I can stand it a little longer. Uh, so I Febreze myself. Uh, oh. I got here. You um, better be glad you pretty. You better be glad you cute. I swear to God, if you was ugly, there's no way you'd be able to get away with this on this topic. Sherry. Kim, what did I text you about two hours ago? You did. You said, be glad you're pretty. Yep. Because if you, if you got to be pretty to say some bull like that. I, you got to be pretty to say, you know what? I sniffed and I had to throw my panties away because I sniffed and I can't take it no more. So I had to throw my panties away. Okay, what else y'all want to talk about? You want to come see me in the next city? I'm going to be in your club. You got to be pretty to, to, to say this mess. I am honest. No, you pretty. Okay, so yeah. All right. So that, so the, so I feel like this eyelash about to, I feel like this eyelash is compromised. But what happened was uh, we got in last night. I don't know what time, but I think we got in about, I don't know, I'm gonna guess. Uh, not, we landed not, I'm gonna guess 11.30 we landed. It was wet. I don't know. So what happened, we got into Cleveland oh. and the man brought us to my brother's house and me and Joshua, came, both of us came in my brother's house. My brother's not here. My dad was upstairs. We said, hello, dad. We both went back downstairs. We couldn't even make it to the bedroom. We both fell asleep on the couch in our clothes with our bags half in our hand. Joshua was one end of the couch. I was another. We were knocked out. So, um, yeah, that's a lot. So our bags, I mean, really, it's a lot to talk about. But let me just say... This trip was very good and magical, but it is definitely was a movie. I can't even tell you everything on the podcast, Sherry, because I told um, I told Caroline part of it, the trip to Paris. She was like, if you don't tell this in your stand up, this is the craziest story I've ever heard. I don't know if crazy just follows me, Sherry, 
The only thing that didn't happen to me on this trip was somebody pooped in my lap. That's it. That's the only thing. No, I'm telling you, that's how crazy it was. Just, I was just like, somebody just poop on me. Anything? Anything else going to happen? Well, you didn't say what? you went to Germany. Can you get help? <laughs> you didn't go to Germany, but can you even give us a little teaser of what happened? This okay, is... let's let's just go through real quick. Run through the itinerary, to... and I've got photos too, Kim. Just sorry to interrupt you. I've got yes. photos too, so just, you know, tell me if the fo- if I can't really, you other than what? a few things I can you, tell. If you run through the photos, I'll say what they are real quickly, and then we'll go to the story. Okay, we don't and then have... you, you got to tell us about why you were in Ireland too, if I can interrupt. Yes, and in New Orleans. The trip started in New Orleans. Oh, uh, back it up. The... Okay, sorry. Go ahead, show the pictures. Just show the pictures. And I will just say what these are quickly. And... When we get together quietly, I would, this is in Paris. That's a cafe. I don't know why I sent you that, but that was a beautiful wow. cross from the hotel. That was a cross from the hotel. How were the people? This, these are uh, some Korean people I met, um, <laughs> but they spoke English and French and they saw Young and Hungry. So they were fantastic. Oh, wow. Uh, that's so that cool. What did they say to you? Uh, they said, you Yolanda, one of them spoke really good English. And then I told them I had never been, was it Vietnam? Nope, it was Korea. And oh, we talked dang. and that was right by the Eiffel Tower. We're all standing in front of the Eiffel Tower and we were getting a snack. There's the Eiffel Tower. It's got me and Joshua, you can't see us, but that's the Eiffel Tower at night, which was way better than the, in the daytime. It was spectacular. Wow. And then, yeah, so that was unbelievable at nighttime just to be in front of the Eiffel Tower. That is Joshua and I think that's Jonathan. Um, so Caroline, of course, was there and her family and our girlfriend, Christine, who's a photographer and her family. So it was great to travel with mothers. That's what me and Caroline were talking about. Mothers will back you up. Like you can just leave with the kids. This is the uh, uh, the Ark of uh, Triumph. Warner this Brothers is- Studio. That's not that Warner Brothers. Like, no, that looks like Paramount Studio. That does look like Paramount when you walk into the gates. They copied this, and actually, it's in New York. Also, a replica uh, is in New York yes. at that part. Yes, yes. But this, you see, this is what's so crazy. This is in Paris. They are celebrating their Fourth of July this weekend, so they got a four-day weekend. But what happened right there? I just happened to be taking a picture. Airplanes. These first of all, this red, white, and blue just shot up right then and then airplanes flew over this i swear it had to be at least 10 airplanes at a time two at a time three at a time flying really low scared me to death but that was the celebration right in front of the christian dior store and louis vuitton i wanted to go into louis vuitton this was a hotel room in no don't get excited because i want you to understand doesn't that look like a little princess room that room was made for a barbie doll yeah that what? Was, no, I'm taking the picture from the door. What? You, <laughs> it was so little. It was so little. So when I got to this hotel, they said, it's against the law to have more than two people in this room. I said, what? I said, wait, wait. But I got it. Well, at first I ordered two double bed, but they said, no, the hotel is so small. They have a law, a certain size you cannot. So I'm there with Joshua and Hannah. I said, but. I'm not gonna put Joshua in a room by himself. Hannah, we're talking $400 a night. I said, so I gotta, we're only in Paris for 12 hours. We got, wow. I was, that's what I'm telling you, it's a crazy story. But that was the hotel room. I wanted you to see so that was made for- Two rooms? Yep, yep. Oh, Princess, man. that was for Princess and the P. That is not a good shot, but it's a shot in front of, that's the, I think Chris has another one, of the giant, um, What's that thing called? The fountain in Paris? The fountain of Treasure Room? Something. Oh, uh, something like that. Sh- yeah, that, that sounds good. Yep. That's the fountain. <laughs> That's a Me cute and thing. Joshua. Yep. And then I uh, took it. Jean de Lee. Jean de Lee. Jean Jean de Lee. Jean de Lee. It's getting better. But, but that was Hannah taking the picture. Didn't understand to get the whole picture of where we were. This was, oh, see right here, that's Evie, you know, my neighbor? And that's Io. See over there in the blue jean? She is head of Disney right now. Disney uh, Disney Plus or Disney. She's head of Disney. She got, you know, she got uh, 
what's it called? Disney television, not the movie part of Disney, but Disney, Disney Plus. Disney, uh, more than that, the other part too. Oh, Disney wow. TV, Disney Hulu? movie. Di well, okay, that's Io. She's head of that. And that's her sister. We run into them. She texts me and was like, "Oh, we're in London." Blah blah blah. I was like, "We just landed in London." So you know my neighbors. You know the one Joshua plays with around the corner. Yes. Yeah, so we hung with them a lot, uh, and we went to this fancy restaurant. Um, I don't know, Chris. What? Oh, that's me and Big Ben. Big Ben is behind me. But they were saying that's not the real name of it. But okay, that's me taking a picture best I can. Um, that is the normal shot of Joshua and Hannah everywhere we went. That's Hannah uh -huh. with her head back, um, and that is Joshua. Uh, I think that's one of the cabs in London, or were we on our way from Ireland? Something. When I tell you these two kids couldn't hang, sleep, knocked out all the time. Wow. So that was that, and then oh, that's me in the bed every what night. That's how I slept. <laughs> what was that for protection? Did you have a belt in my hand? What? That's a protection. Oh wait, were you sharing a room with Joshua? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> it was that's Joshua. Joshua. So I had to sleep. <laughs> I got a bonnet. Hashtag stay ready. <laughs> Hashtag stay ready. Hashtag uh, black mama don't play. I, you, I had to sleep with the belt in my hand because he was just, he's jumping around and screaming, girl. Well, yeah. Kim, you do understand why all this was happening with Joshua, right? Why he tried to climb the Eiffel Tower and jump off. I'm sorry? Why he tried to, you know, tear up In bed. Ireland. You saw what yeah. he was doing on my Instagram. Yeah. We saw him. We saw on your Instagram. And, and for those of you who want to know Joshua, uh, his behavior, check out Kim's Instagram. But the reason why I do believe is because Joshua was off of his sleep schedule. Like when, like okay. that picture of him and Hannah sleeping, probably you got off the plane meeting with people because you're used to doing this. But yes. Joshua and Hannah are not. So their bodies are, you know, when you shut down your body, your nerve endings are on edge. You can't even see straight when you're tired. And probably Joshua was so sleepy and you wanted to get in 92 uh, events within Ireland, Paris and London so he could have these memories till he's 32. You, yep. you was packing so much stuff in. Poor baby, he's nine. Okay, he's 11. Yeah. He's 11. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you, that you took him back to nine is really short. You're working too hard. The fact that you're doing 700 jobs. Oh my God, my friend, my friend and moving. You're doing a lot. So I'll, I'll accept that nine years old. No, you're right. Chris, any more pictures? Because I want to uh, finish real quick so I can tell. I have to get to the main story that happened. So uh, Sherry can appreciate what really went down. Okay. So was that it, Chris? I believe, I believe that's all you said. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So what happened was we started off in New Orleans, went to the Essence Fest. As you know, Sherry, we didn't want to catch COVID. It was a super spreader. We yes. didn't go to think. Yeah. So Sherry wait, wait, was there. I was you, there. We, huh? in New, I interrupted you, but in New Orleans, what were you doing? Did you open for Andre? Is that what you were doing? I opened for Andre. That's okay. I, me that's Andre, what Sherry told me. That's what Sherry told me. Oh, Sherry got jokes. What? Look, she told us before we, before we left uh, for Essence, we, we we promoted Kim and Andre's comedy club appearance at Treme or whatever, a fancy comedy club in New Orleans. At <laughs> this after dark, like kind of a speakeasy, kind of a comedy club you and Andre did. Tell us about it, this romantic- I love you. In the heart of New Orleans with the culture. Nope, nope, wasn't in the heart. Andre, you know, first let me start by saying Andre works very hard and he tries his best. Um, this place was in Treme, which is uh, very historic uh, yes. to New Orleans. It is the oldest uh, uh, black neighborhood, of course, in New Orleans, the oldest neighborhood, which they destroyed with a freeway. and. Not it was a outside event next to a freeway. And, not um, speaking to me. Not back a, back up. Hmm? 
New Orleans uh, in July outside? Yes, it was. Um, yep. And um, they were building, the, my friends were there. They said, we've been here and they were building the stage as we got here. But Custom all stage. was good. They were building the stage. It was, the, the owner was lovely and her, her yeah. boyfriend, lovely people. And they have shows there all the time. It's just, it's just I wasn't ready. I don't think Andre was ready to have a freeway um, behind Maybe. him because at one point, no, one point, Sherry and Andre said, I wish I'd have run out there with my video camera, but I was back there talking. Let me tell you something. All I heard was, eh, net, net, net. when I tell you, a hundred motorcycles. Oh. <laughs> While Andre was on stage. Poor guy. Yes. Andre was on stage. It was so loud and so itchy. He had to stop and just stop and wait. I was dying because you can't you can't compete with all those motorcycles <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's crazy no, because it so uh -huh. andre he went up before you and he did what 30 minutes yeah but on the whole yeah. besides 100 motorcycles how did andre do andre did well he did good um it was a little hard to hear him outside uh, and they didn't have a pro PA? Well, no, this is what they didn't have. Let's just get it the truth. They didn't have a light on the stage to begin with. <laughs> oh, my God. How did you see? No, you no, no. Thank goodness no, no. you hide. It, uh -huh. No, no. It was pure darkness. The first comic went up and the second one. I said, so all you saw was a silhouette and they're doing stand-up. I said, um, I said, I, I, I. I said, I can't go up uh, in that condition. And then <laughs> uh, this? Alex, Alex was like, oh, there's supposed to be a spotlight. And they're talking to the owner, where's the spotlight? Ain't no spotlight. <sighs> the DJ heard me. I said, um, can you hold a flashlight or your phone? I said, what no, I cannot. Is that Andre got you booked in? This is my favorite thing I've ever heard. <laughs> you know, I, I say this because you all have done these type of shows and whenever Essence is going on, like sometimes just a, an alleyway can be like a, a place where you do a show. Like that's not that no. uncommon. No, let me let me correct you. <laughs> I'm trying when to I'm trying show... to look out for Andre. <laughs> no, well, I, yeah, you can't go in here and put this on Essence. When we do a show, a comedy show that is uh, under the essence umbrella, we do it at a theater. We have dressing rooms. Yeah. We have stage lights. We got yeah. a we got security. Um, this was an Andre production, Andre Lavelle production, and Kim is the headline. <laughs> and it, so there was no. How did you get a spotlight? Uh, on I you. went to Seven, the, 17 iPhones. <laughs> no, no, it's a little different than that, Chris. I went to the DJ. He said, I got you. I got you. I look, I don't even know how to say this. I look on stage. He has unscrewed the fluorescent long tube out of his <laughs> DJ booth. Man. And put it on the floor in front of the stage. So now you know how the light is like a scary movie. He has the light. No, I, I should have sent you pictures from that, Chris. I forgot. It's not too late. Oh my gosh! So he I'm used on the, my phone. Use the asbestos light, the asbestos light up above the long. Wait, wrestling. I cannot believe we got to tell this story again next podcast because I got to show y'all, and we can have Andre on. The light. So I. So the other comic. So Andre was thankful because I was like, Andre, they can't see our facial expressions. It could be you, it could be me. If they're not gonna know who's up there, but by our mm. voices, this is not a audio version. This ain't a podcast, this is a stand up. So they put the light up. It was like a scary movie, <laughs> but it was a light. So there was that, moving on. Question. It was successful. Wait, okay. yeah. But this is what I wanna say about, because I texted Andre. I, because when I asked the cab driver the next day, our friend John Murray and I, uh, we was looking to go to dinner and I said, we want to go to uh, Treme. And the cab driver was like, wait a minute, do what? You want to go where? <laughs> <laughs> he was 
No, he didn't say that. The cab driver did not say he that. Did. Josh and showed up bring like, that bottle of water. I was like, well, where is Kim performing? So I texted Andre. I texted Andre and I said, It's on the couch. I texted Andre and I said, Andre, why you got Kim? I said, why you got Kim in the ghetto club? <laughs> he said, he said, she complained, but she killed. It was an experience that we both needed to have to grow. <laughs> he didn't say, we he both didn't say, need it? He, he said we both need it? Oh, this is, he didn't I got say, it. He said, wait a minute, wait I'm a minute. I'm so happy. Oh, this he is said, great. What we, it's an experience we both needed he to said, grow. Grow and understand our ability. And I said, well, I can't, I can't complain. I can't fight you on that because if you did grow and and start understanding your ability, if that's what Kim did, then then that's. <laughs> oh my god! I well, love it. Uh, but uh, cool. we already know that Kim Whitley is going to make lemonade out of lemons. I'm not going to stand up there and fail. Let me tell you something. My first fifteen minutes was about where I was. <laughs> Oh well, God. we have to say uh, Andre is a hustler and he Go will make it work. Bags. <laughs> is that Joshua? Joshua, so go and look at those gray bags. He's on Parisian time. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a parade on. <laughs> Kudos to Andre and Kim Whitley for d doing for extreme growing, well. For, for growing. growing. <laughs> for what? Growing, for growing. I gotta, I, for growing. I, we gotta talk to Andre um, about it. And I want his side of it. Yes, I mean, I think it's great. Yeah, we'll get Andre's side, but for, for you know, kudos to y'all for understanding, getting to understand y'all ability. That was the, I mean, wow. I think, I think at this point in your career, that it's a good growth move. And I just, I wanted to say to you, like, for somebody that doesn't have much, uh, like, you don't quite have the resume that like Sherry does. Like when you bring her up on stage, like I, Kim, I'm just proud of you for Why are you stepping. Being by the couch, by the couch. I'm just proud of her for stepping into this growth oh moment. <laughs> okay. I I'm gonna print, print out the text and put it in the frame. This is a big bottle. Okay. Oh, excuse me for one second. Our, our uh, uh, oh. Go in there and look right now. What is wrong with you? This is another. Oh, still there. We're going to get. This is what happens when you come off of your time flow. It does. Time they literally have been traveling the world because Kim went over to Ireland to do like name that tune or something like that. The Irish version. Yeah, and it was. Yeah. And so London and Paris are like, right, it's a hop, skip, and a jump, like off the 405 to right. go over there. But, you know, she's a mother, and, and Joshua got jet lagged. That's what it is. And his when body. I tell you, he is acting a fool, too. I can't. I'm sorry to everyone who's listening and watching. It's, no, it's been a, it's been, you don't even know. Okay, so let's get off of I don't even want to spend this whole podcast. If you knew how long and how much I had, let's just go from. And in New Orleans, I received a crown award uh, from the Joy Collection. Thank you, Kelly Richardson Lawson. Again, it was absolutely uh, unbelievable. Um, and then we went to Ireland for Name That Tune. And Tisha Campbell came right after me because she texted. She was like, you're in Ireland. And uh, I ran into John Sally. Uh, then uh, we left what, our what, 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 like you said. What, what was John Sally doing in Ireland? Uh, name that tune. Name that tune. Every black person that you saw in Ireland was there for name that tune. Oh, okay. trust. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we left Ireland. You're right, Sherry. It was on an hour, an hour flight to London. Uh, got to London. Uh, lots of things. But we'll just skip over that. And then I decided... I can't even tell the story right now, but this is the story that shit that that Caroline was like, you got to tell on stage. You ever get a bright idea and say, oh, it's going to be fine. I could do it. Yeah. But you rush and you don't put your yes. glasses on. Oh, my God. So 
I couldn't get, everybody was taking the train to Paris. It was sold out. But my friend's brother-in-law was like, there's an app you can get a ticket on. So we were rushing because they were selling out. And I was like, oh, three tickets on the train. Got the train tickets, round trip. Um, got on the train, me and Joshua and Hannah. We get to the train. <laughs> the train man says, oh, oh, this is your stop right here at Lille, France. I said, that's, that's not Paris. He said, well, your tickets, th this train goes to Brussels. I said, what? <laughs> Just to make a long story short, we get off and then I look at the tickets and it says, <laughs> you have to take a bus. We get upstairs, it's a bus, like a street bus, like people outside on the street. No one in Lille speaks English. We, oh Hannah is in a frantic, Joshua has to pee. I take, run Joshua down so we don't want to miss this bus. We run downstairs and you gotta pay to use the bathroom. Oh no. I don't have any I don't have any pounds. My credit card ain't working on their machine. And it was a black lady and she spoke French only. She said, No, no, uh, no, 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 no. I said, so I told Joshua, Joshua stuff jumping up and down and holding his crotch. She said, Oh, okay. She she let him go through. And then she was looking at me like, I gotta pay. And then I start I just had to jump up and down and hold my crotch. I'm jumping oh, up and down like this. She did not care. So Joshua used the bathroom. So I ran back upstairs where Hannah was. Hannah's freaking out because she doesn't know how to say the bus number in French. I haven't taken French. So I it was like, it was, it was one zero uh three six. I said, Uno zero trip all Spanish. Because mm -hmm. French is like Spanish. But it right, I was messing it up, but then we didn't think and, and so a man walked by me. He said, says. So it was uno zero tres. Says, but listen, we could have just, I said, we could have just written the number down and showed the bus driver. Just write, they see the number, you don't have to. She's freaking out, the bus is leaving, I run up. We don't know. Well, our bus is late, but we thought it was that bus. So we're trying to figure out what to do now. Hannah's having a nervous breakdown. Anyway, long story short, the bus finally comes 30 minutes later. We get on the bus. <laughs> This is, the bus stops at the Paris airport, which is outside of Paris. And they tell us we gotta get off. We like, wait, what? Oh they said, gosh. your tickets only go to- Oh my gosh. Mm. I'm on a bus with no bathroom, just a bus. With luggage? Two hours. Two hours, we didn't take, we took a backpack because we were just going for a day. The day is gone. It is now, I don't know, five o'clock, six o'clock. We are now, so I get off the bus at the airport, but I don't get off. I keep one leg in the door. Mm. And I was like, where are, where is this bus going? They said, it's going to Paris. I was like, can we, they were like, no, your tickets, they didn't say all this, but they were saying, you know, pointing. I said, look, so we saw this African dude. He kind of like Hannah. So Hannah, he spoke English, of course, cause they all do, cause they 50 languages. He said, no, this bus stops here at the airport. I kept my leg in the door. They couldn't close it. Madame, Madame, nope, no, <laughs> ni, nah, no, 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 no. I was saying every no that I could think of. Nah, nah, no, no, no. <laughs> nah. Girl, I told the, the, the French guy, the African dude, I said, ask the bus driver if we could please go into Paris. Now, listen, I have no money. I have zero pounds. I can't bribe nobody. I don't even oh, have American God. money. I got a credit card, wasn't thinking. I might have had a couple dollars. One would do nothing for nobody. So he says it in French. And they, because I wasn't letting my leg out the door. <laughs> so the bus driver finally <laughs> said, okay, he'll take us to Paris. We get back on the bus, a stowaways on the bus. And we get to Paris. Baby, the bus dropped us off. Have you ever seen a movie or West Side Story? Or uh, have you ever seen Les Mis? 
Yes. If you ever saw Les Mis or even saw the poster, that's where the bus dropped us off. It was the ghetto of the ghetto of Paris. When I tell you, I ain't never seen nothing like, and I'm not afraid of nothing. But when I tell you, I was like, children, stay close. We go <laughs> out of the bus station. The bus station don't even let out into a street. It lets out into a park. I said, what kind of bus station? And the people, it was like Venice Beach. So they working out and sweating right there. Then other people are dancing. Then all the Africans are right there on the grass, eating and drinking. And, and then there was some steps that went up. You ever seen the Rocky steps? There was some Rocky steps that went up. Hannah was like, well, maybe it's up here. I said, I'm not taking my big ass up them steps. I said, you run your, I said, I'm not, there's no da -na -na, da -na -na. no. I said, run your ass up them steps and tell me what it looks like. She's like, I know this is it. She runs up there and then she looks back and was like, it's another park where everybody's dancing, having fun. Joshua ran up, there's a waterfalls coming down. I said, okay, now I have got to walk across the park like Griffin Park. I can see it, but I got to walk. I, and I don't know why I park, I packed my bags for a week. I had this heavy bag. We walk across the park. Uh, it was Joshua starts dancing, see some Africans, they playing African music. He done ran off over there dancing with them. I said, oh my God, because I can't control them. We, oh that, that, it looked like that exactly how it looked, crazy. Wow, we, it looks but it was just, scary. It, Is that it? No, it was, no, that might be it. I didn't go up there to see. <laughs> When, oh, I'll show you, I'm gonna send y'all personally, I'll send y'all. I finally got an Uber. I was at the end of the road. Oh, you we can did... call an Uber there on your Uber app? Oh yeah, Uber's everywhere. We went Uber everywhere uh, when it worked. We got Wait. the Uber, got to mm. the hotel. That's when the hotel told me, now I'm exhausted. You gotta have two rooms because two people can't sleep in the room and right. And it only, when I tell, I have to show you a picture, the hotel lobby, you have got to lose weight just to get on the elevator and to fit around the corners. My shoulders was hitting the walls. I said, this is, <laughs> this is not, this is, this is a Barbie house. It was a, it was a real live Barbie house and you should be the size of a Barbie in it. Girl, I can't even go through the whole rest of the thing. All I know is at, what? so far I'm at, $1,800 just to get, uh, I said, a day I have, excursion? Not eat, right. So we have to leave the next day at two o'clock. Do you understand? I said, I woke up trying to, I said, I'm gonna take an Uber to Lille to catch the train. I can't, I can't take, I, I, I have to get to the airport to catch that bus. Remember, I have to get to the airport yes. to catch the bus. The bus has to take me to the train in Lille, Paris. I can't take a chance for the bus being late and then I miss the train because we leave the next day from London back here. I had no oh. time to play with. So it cost me an Uber $350. I didn't pay it because I did this. $350 to get to Lille in an Uber. I asked the front desk, is there a train that would take me to Lille? So it was $29 for me and Hannah each and 19 for Joshua, I think, in pounds. I paid that, but I needed to get to the train station. I went, I went on, so, so I, because I couldn't take a chance. I wanted the bus situation to go away. I didn't want to be on no bus again. I don't want that. I said, I'll pay with it. So now don't forget there's two nights at $400, one night at $400 for two rooms. Now I got to get a, so I took a cab that day to run around and see everything in Paris because that's all we had. In the cab, I thought it was, it was a whole nother thing. I thought he was say $70 an hour. I was like, okay, an hour and a half, we can do this. But we ran into some black people uh, from Florida who were prophets in front of the Louvre. Did I send you the picture uh, with the pyramid? Chris, the Louvre, I sent that. Well, we're at the Louvre we run into the black preachers. They done prophesied for another hour. The cab is ticking. Yes, I forgot. But it, great, it, it was an ex uh, I meant to send you the picture. Ex NBA player named um, Billy Thompson he used to play for the Lakers, and his wife is a big time preacher in Florida. When I tell you they prophesied over me, but then they prophesied over my friend Christine, tripped her out. You know, this is a white family. They said they was dead on. I had never seen her son is 19 years old or whatever. He came alive. We had never seen this personality. We was like, what's happening? So we had this whole prophecy. 
That's what I'm telling you, it was the craziest trip ever. $250 later. <gasps> Poor Katie. Oh my gosh. I'm not even at the train station. There he is. Boom. Yes. That's that church. Him and his wife. When I tell you these people came and prophesied, I got it. I don't have, I can't because my phone. I'm about to tell you the next uh, podcast who they were. And their friends, when I tell you they prayed over us and prophesied, changed our lives. Then we left. We get, we get to the, I don't remember. Everything's a blur. Just say this. We get there. We get to Paris. Something happened in between, but I can't, everything's crazy right now. All I know is the next day we get up, we get on the plane to come home to London, to Philadelphia. And I'm going to go back. We get to Philly. So much happened there. I can't explain it, but we went through customs and I think this is when our bags, the time was only this big. We run to the plane. All I know is in Philly, I love people in Philly. Black women don't be playing. I said, how can I get to gate 73 something? We had to take a shuttle from one. It took, it, it was seven o'clock, Sherry. The flight left at 7.15. You know you gotta be there at 7.10. The gates, the doors closed 10 minutes before. I, there's no way, there's nothing but God. I got on the shuttle, but this black girl, young black girl said, get in the wheelchair. She saw a wheelchair, threw me in the wheelchair. No, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Threw Joshua on top of me and she ran with the wheelchair. I was done. When I Where did, she was running up. She, huh? Where was Hannah? Oh, I forgot this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ah, a lot was happening. So we lost Hannah. Oh my gosh, you lost Hannah? Let's just say this. Okay. So I forgot about Hannah. This is why I was telling you so much. Paris. We get, no, Hannah's with us. We get off the plane in Philly. Hannah's mama calls her. I don't know what's happening. I said, Hannah, you can't be on the phone in customs. She runs into the bathroom, talks to her mother. She comes out the bathroom and says, I can't go on. What? I got to get off in Philly. I said, I don't know if you can do that. She said, I got to get off. They called me. I got to do an audition in New York. But since I'm in Philly, I might as well just go on. I, so I, we got to get our bags because you have to take your bags off to put them back in. So we got a bag. I asked the man, I was like, can she just take her bag and go and it's okay? He was like, yeah, go ahead on. You know, they don't care. I said, she was, we were right at the exit. She had her bag. I was like, go that way. So she escapes. I was like, please let me know. I said, just go where the taxi cabs are. Go to the baggage claim here. Just sit in that area and we figured it out. But me and Joshua, meanwhile, got to run. So Hannah's gone. The lady wouldn't let the security lines. I'm not even going to tell you about the security lines. So I could have COVID right now. We don't want it. Knock on wood. Because I had to take my mask off to use celebrity face. I couldn't get, I was just like, see me, please help me. She's like, oh, I know you, girl. So you had to do all that. It's unfortunate, but I had to do that face. The face, because the, the lady, she was like, no, everybody through security, everybody through same line. I was like, I said, I can't, I got five minutes. But now, so the girl, when I tell you she threw me, they was closing the door for the oh. plane from Philly to Cleveland. She throws us out the wheelchair, like dumps us. <laughs> I ain't never seen that. Joshua hurts his ankle. He's crying. I'm like, shut up. Let's go. We're trying to, I'm pulling out stuff, the passports, the boarding pass. The lady's like, close the door, close the door. I said, don't you close that door. When I tell you, we run in and they close the door literally in my back. Oh because my it was another family too, because they were waiting on the people from the international flight, which was us. But okay, let's go through, let's go back. Why do you think I almost missed my flight, Sherry? Did, uh, did you trip? You fought, then you couldn't get the shuttle. The wheelchair couldn't get you there in time. Why? I had two hours. Well, got in a little argument on the plane internationally. With who? Just a little, some little man. I'm not going to say he was racist, but I just kind of got in a little scuffle. And With FBI. Who? Huh? 
You got into a scuffle with an FBI agent? No, no, no. Little stranger, what people don't know is once you go past those doors on the plane, it has nothing to do with American Airlines. The FBI is jurisdiction has jurisdiction. It ain't the police. It is the FBI. After 9-11, they take over all planes once the doors are closed. Okay. So, had a little scuffle. What? Huh? What happened? What happened? Can you, you scuffle, you're kind of scuffling over the details. If I hear scuffle, that's, that's physical. Yep. Okay. So, what? I, I, didn't like, I didn't like push him. What? So, I have a trigger because another man punched me on the plane one. Okay, so I don't I don't like privilege. I don't like entitlement. Uh I surely don't like you talking to me like I'm a slave. Um What do you do you want to break I, this down more? Like this is crazy. And so I thought I might not wanna okay. So first I'm in first class. Okay. There's a there's a galley, you know, at where the, the captain is, right? Then there's the first class cabin. Then there's a galley, because you're on a big plane, the galley in between that right. section. Then there's a business section. Business. Right. And then the kids were right behind that, right? So he was in the very first seat behind, behind the galley with his family. Behind the galley of first class. Right. Or he so he's in business class at the at the at the at the, the aisle period. seat. Yes. Right, and there's a bathroom, and I was standing there, and I was talking to the flight attendant because we had some turbulence, and I was talking to her. And, you know, usually I can get loud and cackle and cat girl, but it was nighttime and it was dark, so, you know, everybody. So we're just talking and talking and not even thinking about it because, you know, he jumps up. I don't remember what he says. I miss all blur, but he jumps up and tells us to be quiet. Uh, you just up here talking, and you just got to be quiet. I'm trying to sleep. That's how he said it. But that was okay. I still was like, well, damn, he was rude. And to her, and she a little bitty flight attendant too. And I, and to her, she was like appalled. But I was like, oh, you know, I guess we, you know, he could have been nicer, but that's what we said. He could have been nicer. Let's move on. I, I said, I guess, you know, we'll, we'll, I said, I'm sorry, girl. I know you gotta go back to work. And that's what I was saying. He jumped his entitled ass up and said, will you shut the fuck up? <laughs> What? First of all, uh, I don't. And then he said to her, "I hope he said it to her because I, I, I drew black." He said to her, "And you're, and you're useless. Get me a drink." <laughs> I, 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 sir. Um, I said I'm a passenger. I'm not getting you nothing. And then he asked for her name, and I put my hand up to block her name. I said, you don't need her name. You don't. Girl, he grabbed my hand. Why he do that? <gasps> I said, you don't touch me. Are you kidding me? What's wrong with you? I Wait, where was Joshua? Huh? He where was the Josh? coach. Josh was in coach, the next cabin. Thank the Lord. Oh, Thank no. you, Jesus. So you, he grabbed your arm. Right, but I started to threaten him, but I know if you threaten now that we got a terrorist a threat i did, i just said i will be and i said i'll stop and then he turned around and said i'll beat you i said well come on oh my god i, said, I thought of tmz the other flight attendant who was standing behind he didn't see her she stepped in because she the lead she stepped in told me calm down go back to your seat and she went and told him to sit down you sit down but you know, I was back there like this. I said, you won't get arrested. You don't get arrested because I'm telling, I'm telling. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a tattletale. That's what I said. And then I said, get me a drink. I said, I said, some ice because I hurt my, he grabbed my wrist and I hurt my wrist. So he grabbed my wrist. I need some ice. So he brought me some ice. They told me to calm down. They gave me a drink. I said, I need you to talk to the captain. Go get the captain. Tell the captain. Tell the captain. I want that man arrested. Well, I feel I feel kind of bad. Cool. Uh, when we landed, you know that announcement you hear when you land. Hi, we have uh, made it to internet to Philly International, uh, and uh, we need all passengers to stay in their seats. Do not oh, move. Boy. Stay in. Do not move. Stay in your seats. And you heard that door open. 
Mm-hmm. And all you saw was a bunch of officials come in and I was looking at them and, and they told him to stand up with his family. Everybody was seated and they got his ass. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like I was 10 years old, shouldn't have done that. But that's what I did. And uh, maybe that was immature. Um, but they marched him off. But then they turned around and told me, uh, sit my black ass down too. Oh my gosh. So you put your fingers in your ear and stuck your tongue out like you were eight. Okay, haven't seen that and you do that probably never. Okay. What did the FBI people say to you? Uh, Oh, shoot, they said, come here. They said, come here. Yeah, you come up here and talk to us. They were very nice. And I told them what happened. They were cool. They took my statement, took everything down. Uh, that American Airlines was beyond, because had American Airlines not taken care of it, it would been a problem. They knew that was out of control, but the American Airlines uh, representation came up there to FBI agents. And when I tell you, I want to give a shout out to the Philly-based crew, Ingrid J, Leslie G, and Chris D. These were the flight attendants that really made sure that I felt safe. Because what happened was since me and that man had that altercation, I didn't feel comfortable going back to check on Joshua. Like I wanted to give him his allergy medicine because of his ears, but I had to walk past him. So oh now God. it's two hours left in the flight and now I can't even go that way. He but actually they, put his hands on you. Oh my I was like, goodness. baby, I was like, this ain't London, this ain't Paris. And then I was all ignorant. I was like, we in the States now. And then I was like, mm, ain't much difference here. Ain't much difference here. You know, it's very interesting. You think about if something ever happened like this, what would you do? And in your mind, you think if somebody put their hands on me, I'm going to go off. I'm from Cleveland. I'm from Chicago. But then when it happened, so many things went so through fast. your mind. You know what I was mad about, Sherry? Why? That I didn't take the training Andre taught me because he grabbed my hand and I could have taken yeah. that. Remember Andre said, when someone grabs your hand, you take it. Baby, I would have been so to take his hand and twist him down and take him to the ground. It's, please don't let Andre hear this because he's going to be I mad know. at you because he sure did show us when somebody grabs your wrist, you take it, you take the other one and, and bend it and yes. bring them down and break their ribs. That's what Andre showed it. But I think though what happened, Kim, is you're a mother. And I think that that mother thing kicked in of Joshua's all the way back there, the ramifications if you overpowered this man of physically. You know, I can't even imagine being in your shoes, but I think it's just a lot of stuff being a mom. That, that made you not do what you might have normally do had you been by yourself. Uh, no, it was, but also that I was with two other black women and you know, we always take the culture on our shoulder. I always am like, I am not going to be ignorant and fight this white man, older white man on this plane because he's ignorant, Kim. That's why I was like, you know what? We will let the authorities and let American Airlines handle this. So, you know, me being silly and all of that, I mean, part of the story, I am just being silly. But on the serious uh, note, I felt bad for the flight attendant. When I tell you he was so condescending to her, when he looked and said, and you're useless, get me a drink. I, I see how people felt back in the day. I right. was... So, like you could see her pain, and just like he was so entitled, and that's what I told him. Say, hey, hey, hey! I said I'm a passenger. Bert, he thought I worked there. I was like, wait a minute, hold up, let's get it together. Wow. It just the fact that he would talk to her like that, and talk to both of us like that. I think that's what, and even the uh, uh, American Airlines said that, and the FBI said, I apologize. I apologize that you had to go through that and, and feel that way. Um, so did they so, take your, the entire, his entire family off? Uh, yeah, I think they had escorted all of them. But what was interesting is the wife never moved, never blinked, never. It's almost like she's, she's been through this. 
like she was like, here he goes again. Like she didn't even know. You know how some wives are like, what's what happened and what's going on? Baby, she I feel sorry for his kid. And I told the uh, FBI people that. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. I said, but I'm not. Huh? That, that he would have to deal with this and have to look at everybody like he's sorry for his father's behavior. Yeah. It, and not to interrupt your story, but I- No, that, that was it. Did, but you remember, did I send you that video of that man when I was coming back from Vegas, the white guy who wouldn't let me sit down and I sent you the video saying privilege? Yes. Remember when I was taking the plane the the and it was just like your story this happened about a month ago and the company that i was working for um flew me privately and when i was getting on the plane i looked at the number of where i was supposed to sit and it was an it was an older white gentleman and i said oh excuse me sir you're in my seat and he said i'm not moving he said go sit over there and i said to him i said at first, I thought he was joking. And I said, well, I'm not going to sit over there because I don't know who else is coming on the plane and where they have to sit. I said, but I can sit next to the window because you're in my aisle seat. And he said, I'm not moving. Go sit somewhere else. And I was like, sir, I'm not sitting anywhere else. I want my seat. And he started, he was like, I'm not moving. And he made such a fuss. And um, his son got on the plane later. He was like 16. And he's like, dad. And finally, um, Kevin was saw my road manager. It was when I was on a Kim Babyface tour. That's what it was. Kim said, you will not talk to her the way you're talking to her. Because he kept talking down to me. And I'm like, I got as much right to be on this plane as you do, sir. And you're in my seat. And he goes, go sit over there. There's nobody in that seat. And, fine. and what bothered me was all of the people on the plane, and I'm going to say this, they were white. Looked at me <laughs> like just like, you were wrong. Like, like I was you were wrong. wrong. And I said, he is in my seat and I can't sit in somebody else's seat for them to tell me to get up. Cause I don't have the privilege to be able to tell somebody else, I'm not gonna get up out of your seat, go find a seat. And so <laughs> they were looking at me like, just sit down. And so the flight attendant came back and he was like, I'm not moving. She could sit anywhere. And I said to the flight attendant, but he's in my seat. And she goes, well, can you go sit over there? And I'm like, why I got to go sit somewhere else? And I said, Sherry, go sit down because if this gets bigger than what it is, it's just going to be a big mess. And I went and sat down and I was just like, it was it was just that feeling of the way he was talking to me. And I it wasn't even with you because I would have went and got the pilot. Flight attendant, you go sit down. Where's the pilot? We're not moving this plane till he give me my seat. Cause I'm sick of these MFs. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of That's these what I did. people. No, I girl, did. you're making me mad. You're making me mad. You're making me mad. I wish you hadn't because they do this on the plane on the way over to London. This white woman stood up, told Hannah to turn her light off cause the baby can't sleep with the light on. I said, oh, hold up. First of all, you can ask nicely. I, everybody else, get you a private jet. Get your own private jet. If you don't want no baby crying, if you don't want nobody talking in the gallery, if you don't want nobody with a light on, get you a private jet because this is all public space right here. And I'm right. sick of it. And then another man on another flight a couple years ago, but I was going through something because I broke up with a dude, so my mind wasn't right. Uh, the plane landed, <laughs> landed. I was in first class this time, and you know how to split in the seat? It was me and um, Boutte, and um, it was a foreigner, another foreigner. This was when they just said you can turn your phones on. Remember before you couldn't turn your phone on at all till you got in the, uh, you know, in the airport. Well, now you can turn your phone on once you land. Well, I fly enough. I know the rules. Obviously, he doesn't. We landed. Girl, I, I said, let me turn this phone on. I turned the phone on, you know, go beep, whatever. Girl, he punched me through the split. He punched me. I said, ow! The other girl, the other uh, people in the, uh, 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 right there, the other passengers jumped and said, what is wrong with you? She could turn. He was like, you can't turn your phone on. She, wait, first of all, you're not the boss of this plane. And oh I can turn God. the phone on. And the other people were like, sir, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? Now, he should have been arrested. And I should have turned, reached around, but he was old. I should have reached around and punched him in his face. I'm so sick of these old people not... Sorry, Dad. 
I'm so sad he's elderly. <laughs> <laughs> Only Kim can make a dramatic story crazy funny. There's a video going around of a man who slapped this woman, an old guy. He slapped the woman. She went and <laughs> freaking socked him so hard. It's it's really crazy privilege. Um, and the way people think that they can talk to you or put their hands mm-hmm. on you um, is something that I would never even think about doing. And I'm not saying everybody does it because, Chris, you wouldn't do anything like oh that. My- you feel like you're you feel like you're in a hidden camera show. You really do, because that's my first thought. I'm like, oh yeah, you're gonna, like you said, you were like thought he was joking on the private jet. That's my thing too, and this is coming from somebody who you know we've I, I, you all have probably been in some scuffles. Like, trust me, I've handled things with like fighting a million times. Like, but as an adult, when people do that to you, it, it infuriate. Like, I hate that you two have to equ- that you you're forced to be like. Oh, they're racist. I hate that. It's that really, makes me. That makes me so sad. It's the first it's thing you go to. I, I, the and dude it, that it, punched it, me on the plane. I don't think it was racist. I think he was just crazy. Well, it turned out that this guy who with me on the plane, uh, when I told the people uh, when I got off, they said, "Well, the son apologized to me," and I said, "I'm oh, not well, even mad." Okay, thank you. Oh Lord, have mercy. Hold on. You supposed to be I'm somewhere. No, no, no. He brought a box. Uh, it was UPS. Okay, he just he dang, he went a ding dong, but then he left. Okay, I feel he like she's, he, she's at um, her brother's house. In she, she's in Cleveland. Yeah, because that I recognize the African tent backdrop, the hut. Oh Sherry, my God. I, can have we, just, we shared too much on this podcast? No, no. But I just no, I, think, I think people will have a comment on it. It's just Sherry. Something, it's just, Yes, sir. It's going to be used as evidence, though, because the next person at CVS that gives Kim the wrong look, she's going to knock a couple teeth out and they won't deserve it. Like it, she's all well, fired let me up tell from you this. Something about Kim, Chris, because I've seen Kim fly. She's been through so much and it, it transcends being a celebrity because, you know, it just it, it doesn't even matter. But I saw this white woman says something to Kim on the plane and uh, with Russian Kim. Mm. And Kim is always, see, what y'all don't know, Kim be in a good mood, but when Kim is, is in a good mood, she's not in a good mood. And that lady, Kim was trying to do something, like put the bag up or something. And this lady was like on Kim, like, move, move. Right, Kim, right. Yeah, that doesn't. happened to Kim that scared the crap out of me because you used to Kim and them dimples. I didn't see not one dimple in her cheek. Like the dimple had closed up. It had yeah. just she, was, up. she was trying to pass me. Give me a second to put the bag up, but she is all like, uh, she didn't even say excuse me. Mm. She was, she was, all, and I just remember doing. Me and Sherry was talking. I was like, yeah, 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 and it was like the lad. It was like a fly. I just kept, and she was trying, and I just did this. That's what scared me. That's this, you turned around so slow. I did. I was like, it was like the zombie look that turned around and Kim's face went blank and it just she got in the woman's face and you said something like I don't know what you said but it was so calm dude please act this act it out please I I think I was just like this I think it was just like this that girl girl you crazy shit I felt like this you you (laughs) she did Give me a second. That's what you said. And I was standing there and I said, I think Kim snapped. I said, I think something in her brain, just the wire snapped. She was so calm, and but it was cold. Look like these people on this airplane, it be some entitlement on the plane. Do you understand? Do you remember our girlfriend who's a comic, Kathy Westfield? You remember Kathy yeah. Westfield? And she was a flight attendant for American. American Airlines, Kathy used to always say she hated flying international because the um, the passengers, she always had a difficult time. She liked flying domestic better. She said the international um, travelers, especially the ones in the first class and the business class were very entitled and they talked so crazy to her that she, you make more money back then 
uh, when we were struggling stand-ups. She, she, she was a stand-up on uh, at nighttime, but her main, the way she paid her bills was she was a flight attendant for American. They paid more yeah. for the flight to do international, but she didn't like it. Daddy in the office. Sorry, she didn't like it because they talked so crazy to her. Uh, and that, and you were an American. That's so crazy. I'm sorry that happened. I, you have to. I, I hate. I hate I'm hearing it. I wish people could see my face. I, w- I my my jaw has been dropped the whole time. I'm super sorry you had to deal with that. That's garbage. Well, but I you know what? You did the right thing. I tell, I tell you what. Who's sorry? He is because he got the wrong one. He got the wrong one. Yeah, Kim Whitley's not the one. Oh, and you know what he told me? He said, you're not supposed to be talking around the, the galleys. That's the rules. I'm about tired of y'all foreigners telling me what the rules are. He said, I fly a lot. I said, I fly a lot too. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can't talk around the galley next to the pilot, but you can talk right here. I can stand here the whole flight if I want to. I said, you need to know your rules. And the flight attendant was like, she's right. How about we, how about we leave the rules to the flight attendant and let's not, let's, can we not do that? Like, don't, that's not your job. You're not employed. It's not your job. He was, you know, he was, he was unhappy, period. You had a person who was just very, very unhappy, uh, which is such a shame. I can't wait to put this on stage because he's hurt. Josh was hurt. Oh boy. Okay. Well, you know what? Good time to end the podcast. Sherry. He flew something out and came back and hit it in the lake. Where is it? Just outside. Uh, yeah, Josh Brogan jumped off the roof. Um, him and Dexter. Uh huh. Okay. It's well, her. <laughs> I think we should proceed as normal. I think so. There's anything broken? Well, hmm. and we've got, <laughs> and we've got some things to talk about before you go. Really fast. Um, I know we've all. I we have to jump off here in like five minutes. So, you're in the middle of moving, Sherry. And then, yeah, and I wanted ahead, to huh? say uh, a lot of people because I said that I had a bunch of stuff to give away, like posters and things. And as I was purging, because I had to throw a lot of stuff away, Chris, because I'm moving from a big house to a brownstone, half mm-hmm. the size. And I, I was just like, it was so many things, and I said. I feel like my fans would like this stuff. Right. So there were things that I kept, like people, I had magazine articles where I was on the cover and people wrote me at Two Funny Mamas at Gmail. And they said, I would like that. One lady said, I wanted the article you on the cover of Organized Magazine, because I think it would inspire me. And I, so I ran across a ton of magazine covers I was on. People magazines, and uh, I was on the cover of Jet magazine, and all of these were going to get thrown away. I had scripts that I had signed from the shows that I was on. I had a coffee table book, uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, like a 200 page coffee table book with pictures of the cast and uh, pictures of me because I was on Everybody Loves Raymond. I, right. Scripts, I had clothing from the different shows that I was on. And I said, they, they were out at the garbage. And I said, I think fans might like some of this stuff. So I kept them in boxes, which are coming to me. And I'll have to say- Oh, that's great. I, I kept a lot of stuff into my organizer, kept going, why you got this junk? And I said, you know, it's funny, it's junk, but maybe not to somebody else who's a fan. Like I had pictures of Kim Whitley and me when we lived across the street from each other, when we couldn't really afford good hair. <laughs> <laughs> Kim is everything. Kim, I had you muted. Garage, Kim. Hi, your what? My bike in your garage. They didn't take a first, bunch of. First of all, first of all, wait a minute. That will. First of all, Josh was fine. He, okay. I'll go out and check, but he got his leg up. He, I bought him this drone and. London or whatever, that big toy store in um, Hammonds. And it didn't hit him in the leg or something. So he's outside. He said he can't move. Mm. I, get, I threw some ice at him. He, I mean, Pop was taking some ice to him. I can't. I can't. He said, and then he yells out, go finish your podcast, Mom. Oh, see, that's Pop the thing that makes you feel guilty. That's yeah. the thing that makes you feel guilty as a mom. We're but okay, to- so he's fine. But wait, so what? First of all, what? 
So you have junk and now you want to put your bike in my garage for how long? You're not going to need it. I'm going to put it on Facebook market. What? My my birthday bike, my purple birthday bike. No, 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 sir. No, 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 no. When I tell you I got a basketball hoop that's sitting out by the garage, you know the basketball hoop that was in front of the garage? I couldn't set it's out. It's such a nice, I had to put so much stuff out. At the, at, at, because we had to leave, I, you know, it was crazy. And I got, I still got stuff there. I got to come back. Didn't leave, didn't, didn't offer me nothing. Didn't offer me nothing. And you was in Ireland. I don't need to take pictures. I got people that can come over and pick up stuff. No, I had to have everything packed. I got to get it on a truck. Is there is everything's on the side of the house and I got to put it on a truck to drive it to New York. My dog is still there. I didn't have time to call you. But can I tell you one thing that I did have? Uh, you know, um, boxes and boxes. Oh, well, well, you, hurry up. I got to go, go buy some underwear. Go ahead. Wait, no, wait, I'm going to tell you this week. Cause it, cause it's it, breaking up. It's breaking up. I'm going to tell you. I'm sorry. Oh, there you are. Oh you were, okay, you were frozen. I'll tell you next week because it's it's a really beautiful, poignant story. But you have to go, Chris. What, what, what do you the, What do you have? You said, but you know what I do have. Is it something I'm going to want? No, it's a poignant story. I can't rush it because you're going to cry. It's something to make sure. Oh, cry. okay. Don't say nothing. But I have found what? a ton of pictures of me and you. They were like when we oh. were young. Oh, that takes. Time. I gotta I gotta see these. That'll be a Take fun episode next them. week. You should have taken pictures of them and sent them. I, I, there, I've got them. I have thousands of pictures. I've, I've tons of, if, if you guys like me on any of my shows, Suddenly Susan, uh, Less Than Perfect, Trial and Error, Jamie Foxx show, I got thousands oh, of- Oh, to send to people. Postcards, it's crazy. Okay. But anyway, Chris, what did, um, but when I get that settled in New York, um, and I will probably just write them and send them and put them in an envelope and get them. Oh, as far as the, the fan, yeah, the fan giveaways. Yeah, you, you, we told people to reach out. Um, also, let's just go ahead and acknowledge, uh, thank you to those of you who did the Just Tell Me I'm Cute challenge. We'll show those next week. We've got a few videos oh, to show. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. so, I forgot about that. That's a good idea. And I just want to mention quickly, I will be on the talk on uh, the next week, uh, Tuesday the 19th and Wednesday the, the 20th. Can I say something about you being on the talk? I watched uh, you went on, on the talk guest hosting. Yes, You were so good. You've gone to another level in growth doing talk shows, Kim, and I oh. have to give you flowers because when you first started guest hosting talk shows, everything had to be funny for you, which is what oh. I go through with comics. You literally were so calm and you presented points and you were so, you were really good. I oh, said, this thank is, you. This is a light skin Tamron Hall. Huh? You better go, on, girl. Um, yep, because as soon as you get the flu or COVID, I got to be ready. <laughs> Tell her, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, guest hosting, you're going to be on today's show or the talk? Oh, the shoot. The talk. Okay. Oh, no, today, it says today, um, that's from an ad, but it says the talk down at the bottom. Today show. No. I know, I know. That's, that's what they said, the talk, the talk sorry. next yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday. So you're going to be co-hosting. I cannot wait to see you on the talk. Uh, another thing is, uh, oh, I just filmed, I was at work for 15 hours. I'm going to be on the show Harlem, uh, on the show Harlem. The oh, show yeah, I like that. Bullet and Grace Byers. I, I got like a big that. major role on there. I was a 15 hours girl, so tired. Um, and then I'm doing Dish Nation from the new Sherry Studios. Oh, so uh, you're, in New York, you're in New York right now? I'm in New York. I'll be back because I have to have a barbecue oh. in your backyard. And I got to right. get, right. get, get my boxes. My boxes are still at the house. Andre went, did, let me tell you something, Dr. Did Dag on Andre Laval. What now? I got two stories. Remind me to tell you about when Andre is supposed to put Jeffrey on a plane by himself. Oh, I remember that one. And you had to talk me down off the ledge. Because Andre, yep. I'll, Andre, I love Andre, but he's an artist. He's not like a detail. You got to have details. 
yeah, like he's detail oriented as opposed to when he's making his films, when he's editing, when he's shooting, he's yeah. detail oriented. But when it comes to Andre, you got to take Joshua to the doctor at five. At five ten, he like, uh, Kim, is Joshua ready to go to the doctor? What are you talking about? Is he ready to go to the doctor? Why you didn't tell me? He does, do he, do, he does do that. He does. He does do. And so Andre is like, I love. He helps us out so much, but it's kind of like this is. And I'm gonna make this quick. It was he was supposed to have Jeffrey on the plane, and literally the doors was closing, and I'm freaking out because I have to head to Vegas. He like, but he made it. But Andre. So anyway, I'll tell you the story. But Andre, I asked Andre because my bikes could not go. They wouldn't. They, I don't. They just not gonna fit. And I said, Andre, I need you to go and get these bikes because they're gonna put them out by the trash because I'm in New York. He gets there. He's like, where's the bags? I said, not the bags. He said, these, but I said, the bikes, Andre. He said, these bikes not going to fit in my car. I said, I texted you, go get the bikes. Didn't you read it? He said, you know, I don't read that. What you mean you don't read that? If you don't read it, you don't know it's the bike. How's my, he's like, I, I'll work it out. How you going to work it out? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He probably went and got my truck. He probably went and got my truck. That's exactly what he did while you were in Ireland. I love every minute. I knew it. I felt it in my spirit. While you were couldn't find a train and you were stranded in a Barbie hotel, Andre then went and got your truck and got the bikes. And I said, I'm wondering. And I said, Andre, how did you ever think we could ever be together? I would have <laughs> been in prison. Damn, Sherry. Like literally, Andre. He like, I, you know, that's the problem with you and Kim. You know, you you trying to do something for you, and you don't want to. You know, you just, I, I got it. I got I, everything taken care of. But, but Andre, what you put me through before you get to the, the end destination is it's not fair to me. I mean, you know, you you just be complaining all the time. Kim and I, we didn't understood our ability. I, Okay, Andre. I what? we gotta if we if I can interject, uh, we gotta have Andre on to tell his side of it next week yes, because yes. I need because I don't want his mama mad at me. And I, oh, and I, and I, I can I can already hear it. There's a fraction of the fans they're gonna be all over your ass because you're being mean to Andre. And I'm you know what? Andre. You're not. You're just talking. But I want to hear Andre's part of it. I want to hear the light. I want to hear the stage. And I can't. I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's. It's going to be great. Yes. Oh, I got to send you the stuff on the stage. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to. You two promise me, Kim, that you're going to come and visit me in New York. We we will. Have my room ready. I'm bringing down for it. You have to go up 54 stairs because it's five levels. So it's 54 stairs. Oh, oh, I won't be there. Tell me. Tell me. uh, Nope. Won't be there. What? (laughs) We, I got you. Uh, Sherry premieres September 12th, but uh, I start working on it uh, in in like three weeks. I actually start working on segments that we're supposed to be doing. So I'm actually here right now. I had to do Dish Nation because it's my living arrangements are not together. So are, I'm they gonna happy, go- are, they, are they getting your dressing room together? Uh, they will be in a couple of weeks. They took, they got to put my picture up on the front of the building and um, they're, they they got to get the dressing rooms together. John's production, his his office. So no, they they just started taking stuff down, is what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have to take the train back to my hotel, so I'm going to go now. I walked literally from 22nd to 48th yesterday. My legs was, but I've been walking every day like that. That's good so for good you. for you. And taking the train, you got to climb the stairs. You're getting on the train, yep. so it's it's a lot. Would of you walking. please stop saying that name, train? Please stop saying that word. Subway. It's a stop saying train. It's it's a trigger. It's a trigger for me. <laughs> Wait, this is the one thing I wanted to ask before we get off this podcast. The whole time you're in Ireland, in London, in Paris, what was your eat, pray, love? journey i ate all the carbs and everything that was there i ate duck and joshua ate duck for the first time i wouldn't eat the escargot i prayed a lot that i would not end up in jail uh choking joshua or spanking him or 
anything of that sort that I could just be calm. Uh, I love that my niece and Joshua got to have this experience, uh, even though I was falling apart. I was excited to give them the gift of travel, to know that the world is not just uh, Cleveland or LA or the United States, that they could hear other languages of people and, and understand other cultures. So that was the love part. That was a good, good little question there. You were ready for a talk show. <laughs> Here, we haven't done this in a while. Uh, smile, pose for the photos for the people. Everybody likes when you do this. Right, let's get the thumbnail. All right, get ready. Man, look how pretty you two are. I haven't seen you all in a little bit. I got to be nice. <laughs> Keep it going. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, There's, just... hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> Sherry, match her, match her face. Come on, Sherry. What? Said, what are you doing? Come on, do, do what you can does. All right, three, two, one. Oh, you all tried to look cute, <laughs> cuter than the other. <laughs> you didn't make an actual ugly okay. face. Okay, wait. Beautiful. Oh, people love share. it. Share. Get, get people. And I'm telling you, do not post it because TMZ is going to take that picture. That will. They oh, I actually, I actually. Do not post that picture. I actually they just emailed always, it to them. Is that bad? That's they're so that they're going to TMZ. They're misogynistic. And they whenever are. they talk about anybody, they will always use that picture. Anytime they want to show you looking crazy, TMZ never uses good pictures of women. They're misogynistic. Never. So anytime they want to put, paint you as crazy, like if they want to, if, if one of these Out husbands is in court, they will take that picture and that's the one they will post. Well, no, no bad pictures. Um, real fast. You just keep that picture when it's at midnight and you feel a little randy. Hey that's now, cool. look out. Uh, Kim, I missed you. Sherry, I missed you. Glad to have you back. All the fans missed you. Uh, yeah, we're working on our two funny mamas uh, tour. Chris is working on it. That is true. That is, I have had several conversations. It is a, a reality that will be here before you know it. Um, also, I, I'm here. I'm here for my uh, class reunion for Shaker Heights High. So this is going to be interesting. I have no idea what today is. Do I have to oh, please. Oh, get with one of the wrestlers that liked you. Yeah, it was a bunch of dudes, wrestlers that liked you. Go on, get, you know. Sherry, you know I'm still on the line, right? Oh, okay. Uh, Sherry, Kim, great show. Hey, and thanks to Jackie Fabulous for filling in last week. Thanks to B Flat for filling in. Yes. Uh, be sure to support both of them and uh, share a clip, share an episode. Keep this thing growing. We're going to take this on the road. Sherry and Kim have no time whatsoever, but they're still here for you each and every Did she week. Just does she just put on sunglasses? To... Goodbye, everybody. See, I, and no, no. And this is how it begins. Oh, now she's going to get up like she's I She's you that now. Was that was good. Because I'm about to go get I'm getting on the subway. Girl, okay, that you? was funny. She don't want people. Like, oh, oh, my really? goodness. Really? Is this what you're doing? Is this what you're doing? And now it begins. The Hollywood talk show host has begun. Because those ain't no cheap glasses. There it is. Where'd you get those from? I like those. Oh, I'll get you a pair. Those are cute. I got them from um. Oh, I might not look. I might not look cute. It's in a black on business. It's a black on business. Oh, let me see. It's called eye candy. Oh, how cute is that? Where'd you find them? L. A. They're they're black on business. It's eye candy creations, and uh, you know who's got their line with eye candy is Cynthia Bailey. Oh yes, yeah, Cynthia Bailey. Yeah, so yeah, I'll get you. I'll get you something. Tune in next you. week. The ladies will be back in action. I met, I met. That's what I met. I met the girl. You know the girl we had on the show that she gave me that bag, that real colorful duffel bag. Yes. I met her down at Essence, so I told her oh, you thank did. you, and I wanted the luggage, and she said they don't have any more right now. <laughs> I'm going to say this: we was at Essence the whole time. I never saw Kim. I kept calling her. We never got together. Mm. I was at Treme, okay? <laughs> she I'm was like, you, she was, was near you. She was near you. 
It just wasn't let up. The cab driver wouldn't take me over there. Bye, everybody. It was was rough. Bye. See y'all. Bye, everybody. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas.